14 marks worth of domain, range, composite functions, solving, sketching. We've got it all, mate. It says the functions f and g are defined by f of x. Basically, what this says is f of x is e to the x plus 1. So there's a posture of saying f maps x onto e to the power of x plus 1. x is an element of the real numbers. Then g of x is ln x. x is bigger than 0. That makes sense because the ln x um, is only defined for positive x values. Part A says state the range of f. Now, I know it's only one mark, but guys, whenever it comes to range, always do a quick sketch of the graph. Maybe it will help out later on in the question. So, we should all know what e to the power of x looks like. It looks like this. It crosses the y-axis at 1. e to the x plus 1. That plus 1 is affecting the y values. It has nothing to do with the x because it's not within the power, right? So that plus 1 is going to add uh, 1 to all of the y values, meaning it's going to move up by 1, right? So it's going to look something like this. Now the most important change really is that the asymptote is at y equals 0. So when we add 1, the asymptote is going to be at y equals 1. It's going to look something like this. It's going to cross at 2. So you go, your range is all values above 1. So your range, you're going to say f of x is strictly larger than 1. Far b. Composite functions. Find f g x. Now this notation is saying f of g of x. So here we have f of x is e to the x plus 1. We're doing f of g of x. So wherever you see x, you're now changing it to g of x. So I see x here. We're changing it to g of x. So we'll get e to the power of g of x. Uh, e, I save that. g of x plus 1. Yeah? e to the g of x plus 1. But g of x is ln x. e to the power of ln. e and ln are inverse functions. They cancel out. And there we go. f g x is a very simple x plus 1. Part C. Find the exact value of x for which f of 3x plus 1 is 3. f of 3x plus 1. We've just basically done this. kind of like a composite function as well. It's a transformation. Now we're saying wherever you see x, you're changing it to 3x plus 1. So we e to the 3x plus 1 plus 1. e, 3x plus 1 plus 1. Yeah, so we just changed that x to 3x plus 1. Uh, equals 3. So we subtract 1 from both sides, we get 2, then we inverse e to the power, which is ln both sides. So we get 3x plus 1 is ln 2, then we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, and then divide through by 3. So there's our answer, x is ln 2, minus 1 all over 3. Um, then part e is saying sketch f of the f and the inverse. Oh wait, no. Let's not forget part d, mate. Uh, part e is asking us to sketch, so I'm actually going to leave part a there, but let's go ahead and do part d to find its inverse. Now, what does the inverse even mean? So remember, these are like function machines, right? So a function takes you from the, uh, the domain to the range. Yeah? Meaning f so this is part D. F takes you from your x values to your y values. Okay. Now the inverse takes you from your y values to your x values. So you're going the other way around, right? But to define this function, we need to look at this way around. Okay. So F does this way. F minus 1 takes you that way. But you're basically having to look at it from the other side. Yeah, you want to look at it from this side. So you're basically going to switch these around so that it looks like this. Okay? So in terms of a function machine, because we want to do f minus 1 of x, right? So we're going to go this way around. So we had to swap the x and the y. Okay? And that's what we need to do when doing inverse functions. Okay? We're switching the y values and the x values. Okay? 
So when we do that in practice, when we have our function, our function being f of x is e to the x plus 1, we're going to say y equals e to the x plus 1. Then we're going to switch the x and the y. And then we just rearrange for y. So we subtract 1, then learn both sides. So we have y, which is f minus 1, is ln of x minus 1. And it does say to state the domain. Now, because we switched the x and the y, what was the domain is now the range. Okay, and what was the range is now the domain. So if we want the domain of the inverse, the domain of the inverse is the same as the range of f. And we know what the range is, this. That's just going to be the domain for this. It's just we change f of x, which is y, we just change it to x. Yeah? So here, x has to be bigger than 1. And that makes sense, because we said you can only learn a positive number. So if you make this bigger than 0, you get that anyway. OK, part E. Sketch f and its inverse, stating the coordinates of intersection with the axes. Now, we've already done part of this. Now, I'm going to include the asymptote, even though they haven't asked for it. So I might do two pictures uh, if I was doing the exam. So my graph looks like this. So this crossed at 2. Now, when you do inverse, when we're swapping the x and the y, we're letting f equal x. So it's a reflection in the y equals x graph, like this. Okay. So if this is y equals 2, when we reflect it, it becomes x equals 2. y equals 1 was the asymptote. So when we make y equal x, the asymptote will be x equals 1. Okay. Now you might be wondering, all right, I did that pretty clean. That's 1, 1. Uh, how do you remember what the log graph or the lung graph looks like? Well, I'll try and help you out. Here you need your hand. So let me try and focus that. No, I don't know if I can, but you can maybe see it. But basically, if you look at your hand here, you've got the e to the x graph here. You're looking at your right hand, by the way. So there's e to the x. And then here's your log graph, your thumb crease, basically. If you see it maybe faintly, that's y equals x over there in between. But yeah, you basically got your lung graph here. This is the hand trick. And you got e to the x over there. Okay. So let's just make sure that's focused now. So uh, yeah, that's it. The graph, you look at your right hand crease, looks like that. Okay. Now the question did want us to sketch the f and f uh, f and inverse, giving the coordinates of the intersection with the axes, which we've basically done. So let's just write, do our clean solution now. So our clean solution is that one's doing this and one's doing this. This is two, this is two, uh, this is e to the x plus one, and this is ln of x minus one. Okay, and that's pretty easy for four marks. But that's it guys. That's how, well, a nice question, a five-part question that involves range, domain, composite functions, inverse functions, and sketching all of them all in one. So if you learned something today, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. And if you want to submit your own questions, you could head to the Lung Gang Reddit. And if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, link is in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Nice.